man with golden beard Silver moon that gently gleam oh, oh, praise God Oh, praise God Alleluia 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 Dear Mother Earth, you day by day Unfold your blessings on our way Oh, praise God, alleluia All flowers and fruits that in you grow Let them God's glory also show God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. All you with mercy in your heart, forgiving others, take your sorrow bear praise God and cast on him your care oh praise God oh praise God alleluia 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 Things their creator bless and worship God in humbleness. Oh, praise God, Alleluia! Praise God the Father, praise the Son, and praise the Spirit three in secrets are given. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus, Lord God, Lamb of God, you 
First, a collect for the feast day of St. Francis of Assisi that we celebrate today. Most high, omnipotent, good Lord, grant your people grace to renounce gladly the blandities of this world, that following the way of blessed Francis, we may, for the love of you, delight in your whole creation with perfectness of joy through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The collect for this day, Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we to pray, and to give more than we either desire or deserve. Pour upon us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving us those things of which our conscience is afraid, and giving us the good things for which we are not worthy to ask except through the merits and mediation of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Let me sing for my beloved, my love song concerning his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard on a very fertile hill. He dug it and cleared it of stones and planted it with choice vines. He built a watchtower in the midst of it and hewed out a wine vat in it. He expected it to yield grapes, but it yielded wild grapes. And now inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I have not done in it? When I expected it to yield grapes, why did it yield wild grapes? And now I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will remove its hedge, and it shall be devoured. I will break down its wall, and it shall be trampled down. I will make it a waste. It shall not be pruned or hoed, and it shall be overgrown with briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the people of Judah are his pleasant planting. He expected justice, but saw bloodshed. Righteousness, but he heard a cry. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Restore us, O God of hosts, show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. You have brought a vine out of Egypt. You cast out the nations and planted it. You prepared the ground for it. It took root and filled the land. The mountains were covered by its shadow, and the towering cedar trees by its boughs. You stretched out its tendrils to the sea, and its branches to the river. Why have you broken down its wall, so that all who pass by pluck off its grapes? The wild boar of the forest has ravaged it, and the beasts of the field have grazed upon it. Turn now. O God of hosts, look down from heaven, behold and tend this vine, preserve what your right hand has planted. A reading from the letter to the Philippians. If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day 
a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew, born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenants and went to another country. When the harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized his slaves and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again, he sent other slaves, more than the first, and they treated him in the same way. They treated them in the same way. Finally, he, said, he sent his son to them saying, they will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, this is the heir, come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. Now when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do? What will he do with those tenants? They said to him, he will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the harvest time. Jesus said to them, have you never read in the scriptures the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? This was the Lord's doing, and it was amazing in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you, the kingdom of heaven will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. The one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. When the chief priest and the Pharisees heard his parables, they realized he was speaking about them. They wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowds because they regarded him as a prophet, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Come, Holy.
Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of the faithful and kindle in us the fire of your love. Amen. Good morning, church. As, <laughs> as someone who left parish ministry before the pandemic, this new way of reaching you feels a little uh, strange to me. A little like, you know, the robot, the Sheldon robot on uh, Big Bang Theory that walked around with a tablet. But with the good work of our worship team, we will make it work. I am very grateful to the bishop and to his associate, Kimberly Karishan, for thinking of me for this interim rector's ministry. And of course, for the vestry who called me, I believe God is calling us to do a new thing. God puts the right people, I believe this now, uh, God puts the right people in the right place at the right time for the right reason. And here we are together. I had the pleasure of meeting uh, Michael uh, about a year ago at uh, an event that was being held here for clergy when I first came back into the diocese. And then I got to spend a few hours with him last week before he left. And you know, he really loves you and he will really miss you. And Michael, if you're watching, they really love you too. While the people of the parish mourn together, the priest mourns alone or with their spouse. The people of the parish have one another. They can talk to each other. They can think about the future. They can plan together. But the priest and their spouse pretty much go away and start all over again. I guess maybe for everybody, it's just a little bit lonely. So I take a new view of this passage of Paul's letter to the Philippians that we just heard, that Aaron just read. And this begins at the seventh verse, which is sort of in the middle of that reading. Yet whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as lost because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ the righteousness from God based on faith. A not so pastoral reminder that we are here because of Christ and we are to lift that reason up. But I promise I'll be a bit more pastoral than regarding everything that came before as rubbish. So a few words about me because it's a little difficult to get to know each other when we can't be together. I have been a priest for 26 years. Time flies when one is content doing and being the person God calls us to be. I was born and raised in Michigan. In high school, I had a really good friend named Bill Phelps. We were not sweethearts until after we graduated from college. Eventually, we married one another and had two adorable little boys. And after we sat through a particularly deep sermon on selling everything to follow Jesus, we quit our jobs, we sold our house, we sold our cars, we cashed in all of our savings, and with the blessing and encouragement of the bishop and our parish and assorted committees, we moved to New York City so I could attend the general seminary. After graduation, I became an assistant to the rector in Royal Oak, Michigan. 
The rector had been there only two years and announced he was leaving. The vestry asked the bishop to make me the interim. He agreed if I would attend interim training school. So I did, and that empowered me to stay for another two and a half years until I was called to Rector St. Brendan's right here in the North Hills of Pittsburgh. I was there almost 11 years until I was called to Northampton in Massachusetts. When we left for Massachusetts, our kids had become young adults living on their own. And they said, goodbye, mom and dad, we're staying here. So after a little over 10 years in Massachusetts, we came home. Home being where the heart is and we find our hearts in our family. They are part of our blessings from God. So a few years ago, I was on sabbatical in the UK. I did a lot of bus riding and subway riding, and I was quite taken by an ad campaign that was running, and there were billboards on all the walls and you know wherever they put billboards. The ads were everywhere with the same theme and the same format. They were for a cell phone company called Orange. And each of these billboards had a personal story on it. The premise was that everyone we meet, for better or for worse, contributes to who we are. The ad contained wonderful creative testimonies. And for example, I'm gonna read one that I actually copied down because it really was tender for me. And it went like this, but with a British accent. I am my mum's cake that gave me a taste for chocolate and my dad's business stories that gave me a taste for sales. I am our first souffle, which finally rose, and the first supermarket buyer who said yes. I am my wife, Annie, who encouraged me, and my customers who keep buying from me. I am a trifle, a brownie, and a cheesecake, and a mousse called goo. I am James Averdeek, founder of Goo Chocolate Puds. I think that's short for puddings. I am who I am because of everyone. Ads like that one were everywhere, and each one was a tribute to the people and events that helped form them. I brought that ad to your attention because it spoke to identity, our own identity, mine, yours, and ours. And it speaks to how we understand community. And it speaks to the people and relationships that make us who we are. For me, today, feels like a new beginning, a new friendship in Christ. I am who I am because of everyone I have ever met, everyone the Holy Spirit has put on my path. I came here having been in this diocese before, but it was a very different diocese then. And I came to a parish who was working on building itself up, a brand new, pretty brand new parish, growing in its social ministry and planning for the future, a congregation engaged with all of God's people. And you are welcoming me for the gifts and skills I have learned in other places. I'm excited to be with you and to learn all the new things that you are going to be teaching me. All the ministries God is calling you to, you as a church, me as a priest, each of these events has helped us to become who we are and who we will be in the future. 
Together, we are concerned about things like mask. When can we move to in-person ministry, in-person worship? We are concerned about how the people are doing that we don't see their faces and their names popping up on Zoom on Sunday. And of course, how can I prepare you for new ministries with a new rector? I worry that I won't know names and faces with all of these darn face masks that we're wearing. So I'll learn you all with your face mask and hopefully before I leave, we'll be able to take these masks off and I can see what you really look like. You are who you are because of all the people who have been here before you, who nurtured the children, cared for the building, preached the gospel, and reached out to other. You are who you are because of each other. You are who you are because of Roger and Cynthia and Diane and Michael. They're all in you as, long, as well as all the former rectors whom I don't know. We all are who we are in the people we have laughed with and cried and prayed for. I am who I am because of the people who have loved me, those who've been angry with me, and those who have given me a compliment, and of course, a complaint. I am in the prayer I speak to God for you. You are who you are because of all the unique experiences that have made you. I guess it's a little bit like those Russian nesting dolls. Open one doll, and then there's another, and then there's another, and then there's another, until we finally get to that little core in the center. In 1 Corinthians, we have the line, for in the one spirit we were all baptized into one body. Jews are Greeks, slaves are free, and we are all made to drink of one spirit. We are part of and in everyone who came before us, who comes behind us. I know God called us to be together, and I am blessed for it. So I wrote a cell phone ad and um, like the one I read at the beginning, and this one is for Jesus. I would like to share it with you. It goes like this. I am the child of a single mother who listened to angels. I am a kid who loves to hear stories in the temple. I am the kid who drove his parents crazy with worry when I missed my ride home. I am the man who was baptized by his cousin and whisked off to be tempted by the devil. I had a smart mouth to my mother, like every kid, except I saved the wedding with my winemaking skills. I mourned when my best friend and cousin was killed. I'm a healer, I'm a truth teller. I am your best friend when you need me I am a teacher and a preacher. I am the new church and the new community. I am everyone who has come to believe in the power of love. I am in you and you are in me. I am who I am because God. God is in everyone. Church of the Redeemer, I am blessed to be here through the changes and the excitement ahead. God will bless us all. Amen. Let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. 
We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, right from right, true God and true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became a party from the Virgin Mary and the Holy For our sake, he was crucified and across his life. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in the words of his Christians. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come here and be glory to the living and the dead. But his name will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from God and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped in our life. He is so to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. We acknowledge the baptism of the forgiveness of sins. We look at the resurrection of the dead and life of the world as well. Amen. The response for the prayers of the people is receive our prayer. Gracious God, we offer these prayers as humble citizens of your creation. Receive our prayers as we understand that you know our hearts even before we begin. For those around the world in need of your loving embrace, for those who worship and those unable, we pray that all members of your family join together in teaching your ways of healing and peace. God, in your mercy, Receive our prayer. As we prepare for the election of leaders in our country, let us come together to, attack, to elect leaders of integrity, truth, and justice for all. We pray for peace in the days and weeks leading up to, during, and after the election. God, in your mercy, receive our prayer. For our military and those who stand in harm's way, for our first responders and our medical personnel, for researchers and home health care workers, for hospice workers and Stephen ministers of God, Stephen ministers. God, in your mercy, receive our prayer for countries fearful of food insecurity disease violence terrorism and overwhelming corruption god in your mercy receive our prayer for refugees and refugee camps for women and children at risk for endless days of waiting for a better place to live and rest. God, in your mercy, receive our prayer. For forests, oceans, and glaciers, wild animals, the air we breathe, the water we need to live, for climate, good for the growth of the food, for the world and the sky above. God, in your mercy, receive our prayer. On this feast of St. Francis, we pray for all our pets who have shown us true, unconditional love every day. And we pray for those who have died this year. And we pause for you to add your own intentions. 
God, in your mercy, receive our prayer. For safety in our streets, for schools, playgrounds, public transportation, and all who work for the common good and justice. God, in your mercy, receive our prayer. For the lonely, for those who grieve and those who have no hope, for those who are sick, especially Jim Edgar, and those on our long-term prayer list. We pause for you to add your own intentions. For the President of the United States and his wife. God, in your mercy, receive our prayer. We pray for those who have died and rise in glory, especially Levon Resner. We pause for you to add your own intentions. God, in your mercy, receive our prayer. I invite your prayers of petition and thanksgiving. Holy God, mighty God, immortal God, adored by angels and praised by your saints, receive these our prayers for your holy church and grant them in accordance with your gracious will and through the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, and by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we only repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. My sisters and brothers and siblings, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace, people. That's peace, peace everyone. Peace, you too. Um, peace. Peace, everyone. That's peace to everyone. Peace, everyone. That's peace. Peace be with you. Peace to everyone. Peace. Peace. Now let us with gladness present the offering of our life and our labor and our love and our song to the Lord.
Our worship continues with Eucharistic Prayer A, the Great Thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. Give thanks to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, right to give our thanks and praises. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, because you because you are greatly glorified in the assembly of your saints. All your creatures praise you and your faithful servants bless you, confessing before the rulers of the world the great name of your only Son. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Oh, oh, oh. 
subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all, who stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took a cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is God, Christ is risen, Christ is We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ taught us, we are bold to say, Lord, Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and power, and the glory, forever and ever. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy upon us. Jesus, Lamb of our sins, have mercy upon us. Jesus, sweet
gifts of God for the people of God. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. King of glory, King of peace, I will love thee, and that love may never cease, I will move thee, thou hast granted my request, thou hast heard me, thou didst know my working breast, Thou hast spared me. Wherefore with my utmost heart I will sing thee, and the cream of all my heart I will bring thee. Oh, my sins against me cry, thou didst clear me, and alone when they reply, thou didst hear me. Several days, not one in seven, I will praise thee. In my heart, no, not in heaven, I can raise thee. Small it is in this poor sword to enroll thee. In eternity's too short to extol thee. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. In Christ our Lord. I'm going to invite you all now to bring your pets to the forefront of your screen. I have a special little pet here today myself. My dog Skittles is with us. So here comes Skittles and I hope everyone else has got their pooches and kitties and fish and snakes and llamas, horses. Come here Skittles. All right, this is Skittles, and maybe you all could read with me the 
Thanksgiving for the beauty of the earth. We give you thanks, most gracious God, for the beauty of earth and sky and sea, for the richness of mountains, plains, and rivers, for the songs of birds and the loveliness of flowers. We praise you for the good gifts and praise that we may safeguard them for our prosperity. Grant that we may continue to show in our grateful enjoyment of abundant creation the honor and glory of your name now and forever. Amen. Then I'm going to put Skittles down for a second and ask you to join me in reading the prayer of St. Francis. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us so love. Where, where there is injury, pardon. pardon. Where, where there is discord, union. Where, where there is doubt, faith. Where, where there is despair, hope. Where, where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born again. Amen. Okay. So for all the kitties and the doggies, we bless you, and we wish you safety and health all your days long. And for... And the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small, all things wise and wonderful, the Lord God made them all. Each little flower that opened, each little bird that sings, he made their glowing colors, he made their tiny wings. All things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small, all things wise and wonderful, the Lord God made them. The purple-headed mountain, the river running by, the sunset and the morning that brightens up the sky. All things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small. All things wise and wonderful, the Lord God made them all. The cold wind in the winter, the pleasant summer sun, the ripe fruits in the garden, He made them every all things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small, all 
things wise and wonderful, all what God made them He gave us eyes to see them, and lips that we might tell. How great is God Almighty, who has made all things well. All things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small. All things wise and wonderful, the Lord God made them all. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia.